Hey everyone, and welcome back to another general tier list for Devour. We're going to be doing the Slaughterhouse updates 4.1. We had to wait for that to make sure that everything was kind of balanced out and tweaked. So here we are with the tier list with the new uh, perks coming from Slaughterhouse. And you're going to see things moving up and down as we've reevaluated and checked things out. So let's dive right in. And the first perk we have to do is Crawler. Crawler has a gives you a plus 100% movement speed when knocked down, and unfortunately, Crawler is still still going to be in B tier. Uh, there's not many practical uses for Crawler. There was a comment on my uh, in video where Crawler didn't. I think Crawler made B tier or something like that, and uh, someone was arguing for kind of like A or S tier. I can't remember exactly uh, because it lets you get out of the tunnels faster or get to a safe spot faster. The point of Crawler is literally just to make you faster to get somewhere when you're down. If you're getting to a safe spot, guess what? The people there are already waiting for you safely. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Uh, you could actually wait out a an enraged timer with, you know, crawling normally. So crawling faster just gets you to somewhere slightly faster. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't have that many practical uses. You can use it a little bit tactically. Uh, sometimes to, you know, wander around the map to look for demons or look for items and stuff like that. Uh, but if you're doing that, it means you're down and you're playing in nightmare mode, so you can't get back up again. So moving faster doesn't really help you <laughs> in, in most cases. Being down is just being down. Moving faster being down isn't that big of a perk because the people who are up are already going to be waiting for you. Nine times out of ten. Crawler might come in in an emergency, but... That's just not how it's going to work. And unfortunately, here's how we're going to break things down. D tier is for perks that you just don't just don't use them. They, they don't really have that good of a practical effect. They don't really have that good of a niche effect. They're just kind of there. And if they were buffed a little bit to give them a little bit more utility, yeah, they could make it up into C, B, A, S, maybe. Uh, but as they stand, they're not perks that you really want to use. S tiers for perks that are useful on every single map. They have good use, and that good use goes all the way through every single map. A tier is a perk that is good on either all maps, just not as good as S tier, or they're good on most maps, and they have this fantastic ability that you wish they they had the use for on every single map. B tier right here is uh, more niche perks that can be good in utility roles or if you're playing as a team and somebody wants to do something a little bit more specific like be a healer or finding objects or something like that, sure, B tier, you know, you can grab it because the rest of us are, you know, bringing pra more practical or better perks. C tier is even more niche that you're just kind of bringing it in case something happens. In case something happens but otherwise you're basically playing perkless and d is basically playing perkless because these don't really help at all <laughs> so that's why crawler goes into d tier next up we have acceleration which gives you 20 percent movement speed for 20 seconds after being revived <clears throat> excuse me um this i still think is a c tier perk it's not that useful but it can be useful actually you know what i'm going to be taking acceleration i'm going to be putting it right down here uh I i'm actually going to put it under crawler now that I've, uh, now I've thought about it because you're getting a, a speed boost after you've been picked up you're usually like if you're being picked up the person who's being tart like who's picking you up is being targeted by minions or the demon most likely and not you so they're the person who's going to go down and you're going to get plenty of time to get away anyway there's not really that much use uh for acceleration it needs uh, something else maybe you know, you get, you know, you're revived 20% faster, and you move 20% faster uh, afterwards. Maybe something like that. But other, I, I'm, that's not the video for this. I have a whole different video for that if you want to go back and look on my channel where I suggest uh, buffs for the weakest perks. But that's where acceleration is going to be. It's going to fall down to D tier. I thought it might have been C tier uh, last tier list. No, it's 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 definitely D tier. Next up, we have uh, long sighted. Long side, it gives you all items highlighted at a 50% greater distance, and this is still uh, D tier. Might remain at the top of D tier. Uh, there's very few situations where long side is really, really going to help you out. Because um, in most maps, you're just walking into a room, and you can see if it's a really big room, like the saloon, uh, 
on the end, you're going to see halfway across that room. And then you take a few steps and you can see everything highlighted in the room. You know, a few steps here and there saved is not really helping you on basically any map uh, unless you are trying to optimize your movement and stuff like that. And you're still not using this perk because there are better perks to optimize movement instead of vision. Um, there's really very few places on in any map that this is actually going to be super useful. And you're you're better off using perks that look through walls to tell you that something is for sure there instead of walking into a large area and not taking those few extra steps. Take the few extra steps and take a different perk. Uh, Long-sided is just not worth it unless it's baked into uh, all the other perks that let you see through, you know, give you aura vision and stuff like that. Next up, we have Quartermaster. Medkits are highlighted through walls, and this is one of the first perks that you'll see that is useful for people who want to take on a very specific role in a team while everybody else uses stuff that's above this. Um, the reason I'm putting it in B tier and not in C is because it can come in clutch to guarantee, okay, there's definitely something on the other side of this room, but unfortunately, it also has the restriction of if you're checking rooms for medkits, just because you know for sure that there's a medkit in the next room doesn't mean anything because guess what? You were going to go and check that next room anyway. You know, it kind of makes it kind of a little bit pointless. The only reason this stays in B tier is because in a clutch situation, you can maybe like sometimes in, in uh, areas like the inn where you're running down the hallway, you can just kind of look back and forth uh, between either side of the hall and you can, you know, see a medkit faster than if you checked individual rooms in that scenario. In that scenario, yes, very good. You can even kind of like look up sometimes uh, in rooms and see where medkits are. Those scenarios, good. Any other scenario, it's not really that good of a perk, but it's okay if somebody has it on your team. So, uh, Quartermaster gets B tier. Next up, we have Supply Runner. Now, Supply Runner was in S tier last. Uh, excuse me, was in S tier in our last um, tier list, and I I really want to put it into S tier again because it gives you a good boost, but it doesn't give you a consistent boost. It has a requirement, has a condition to its uh, fourteen percent, or I'm sorry, fifteen percent movement speed increase because Supply Runner gives you fifteen percent movement speed when carrying a ritual item because it has that ritual. Or, I'm sorry, because it has that condition that you have to be holding on to a ritual item, it means you can't hold on to anything else. It means you can't hold a flashlight, can't hold a battery, can't hold a medkit. You have to hold the ritual item. And while this is okay, um, it, it, it stops you from being able to be a more productive member of the team, but it is an extremely good perk to be able to get the items where you need to get them quickly, and save yourself some time. I'm not going to say don't use this perk because this perk can come in very, very, very clutch on maps like the inn and the town where you have to run, uh, where you have to like look for the new uh, pentagrams that have lit up and you have to run the items that you activate with the pentagrams over to the sacrifice area, which is going to be on the opposite side of the map usually on in most cases. So... This can be a very, very, very good perk on almost every single map. Even the farm, uh, where that 15% increase can mean the world between, you know, grabbing the goat and running it to the uh, basin and not getting there. 15% can actually make that difference. But on other maps, such as, like, say, the Asylum, you know, it will help you with that quick run, you know, drop down the uh, hole, and run down to the basement stairs and drop drop off your rat. But because of where the demon typically is, which is on those stairwells, uh, it can sometimes just not make a difference at all. And when it comes to smaller maps like the Asylum and the Inn, uh, you're usually better off with different perks that will help you in a more general sense. Instead of getting from point A to point B, doing the objective instead of getting to the objective. That's why Supply Runner takes a slight hit and goes from S tier to A tier, in my opinion. Excuse me. Next up, we have Speedy. Speedy's actually going to go from A tier. This is going to be one of those that you see get, get a bump. 
It's going to go from A tier to S tier because it has no conditional requirements for its speed boost. And it's a general boost of 7%. Is it half of Supply Runner? Yes. But what it does is say, okay, the amount of time you save running the item from where you kept them to the sacrifice point, you get, you know, double the speed, slightly over double the speed of Speedy. But Speedy says it doesn't matter when you're moving, you're getting a 7% speed increase. It doesn't matter at the beginning of the game, end of the game, carrying a ritual item, not carrying a ritual item, nothing. It doesn't care. All it cares is, are you moving? If yes, plus 7%. This is useful on every single map, and it's a time saver. Time savers in this game are absolute king, so speedy, congratulations, you get bumped up to S tier, and we're all very happy for your success. <laughs> After that, we have Powerful Insight. This is one of the two new perks for uh, Slaughterhouse. Powerful Insight says batteries can be seen through walls, and just like... Uh, Quartermaster, Powerful Insight is going to be going into B tier. But actually, I'm going to be putting it under uh, Quartermaster because Powerful Insight has one big problem. Batteries are small. Being able to see a battery's uh, highlight through, its, through a wall means that you're always having to look for something very, very tiny while you're running through and trying to just quickly scan rooms and stuff like that. You can easily miss a battery's highlight because it just sometimes you just think it's the uh, white glare off a piece of metal or something like that because they're so small. If it came with maybe a sound effect, like a little ding or something like that, might put it above Quartermaster. But again, because this is kind of like a niche situation where, okay, yeah, you make sure you go and find the batteries. Cool. We're okay with you know you having that perk because, again, we're using something, one of these perks. You know, one person using one of these isn't that bad. Um, if it was, you know, if long sighted was baked into these two perks, automatically they become better. Automatically, they're fantastic. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, Powerful Insight has the same problem as Quartermaster, and that is that you were going to be checking that next room anyway. And the only advantage it really has over Quartermaster is that it might help you see the small thing better. But if you didn't see it to begin with, with Quartermaster, batteries and stuff like that, they only have very specific spawn points. So once you learn a map, you can just go to the spawn points. You don't need these perks, but they're good for learning. And they're good for like new players who want to try and help out the team by gathering supplies. So that's why I'm putting it into B tier. It's not a bad perk, but it's not that useful either. After Powerful Insight, we have Immune. Uh, movement speed is decreased by 7%, 70%, sorry, uh, less when slowed by a minion. Now, this is an okay perk, and I'm probably going to be put, it's probably going to go from C tier from last time up into maybe uh, B tier. I'd probably put it at the top of B. It might go into A later on. We'll see. Let's see if this will cooperate with me, too. <laughs> but the reason I'm putting Immune up into C, and maybe later on if we look at it and we reevaluate it uh, to make it A tier, um, being able to decrease the movement speed by 70% when slowed by a minion is good for new players and stuff like that to kind of kill their fear of minions a little bit. The only reason I don't want to put it into A is because it teaches you bad habits. And that means it teaches you that you can just run through the minions and it's not that big of a deal. You know, not that big of a deal. The biggest problem is that some minions, like on the, um, on the farmhouse and the asylum, you can't run through them. You just can't. In fact, that might be why it should go over here because these don't care about what map you're on, these do care about what map you're on. But, uh, you know, the the crawlers on the farmhouse, if they touch you, you're, you're staying still. You can't move out of the way. If the uh, wheelchair demons in the uh, asylum, they touch you, you're grabbed, you're not moving. They don't slow you down. Only the inn, the town, and the slaughterhouse now have slow down minions instead of grab minions. So that's why this probably actually won't ever bump up into A. 
Um, maybe if it said there was a 70% chance that you didn't get grabbed as well, bam, automatically probably bumped up into A tier, but I'd probably keep it at high B tier instead. But unfortunately right now, immune, uh, while good for most maps, not good for two maps. So that's why it's probably low B tier. In fact, I probably, I kind of want to put it into high C tier, but we're going to keep it in low B instead. Next up, we have Fast Worker. Long Interacts, not including Revives, are 50% faster. Now, this perk was in S tier, top of S tier. In fact, last time we made a tier list before Slaughterhouse came out, it's actually probably going to go right here into the top of A instead. It's going to drop down a tier because, remember, S tier is a perk that is absolutely great on every single map. It's useful on every single map. There is no problem with it. And here's the big thing. The thing that keeps Fast Worker out of S tier is the Asylum. Because there are no long interacts other than revives in the Asylum. The putting the rat on the chair, the putting the fuse into the fuse box, and putting and, and flipping the switch to electrocute the rat are all short interacts. So Fast Worker does not help with them at all. So one map actually brings Fast Worker from S tier to top of A, and it'll probably always stay at top of A unless we get a really interesting perk because of that. On every other map, you can bring Fast Worker and you won't have done a single thing wrong. In the farmhouse, pouring the gas, 50% faster. Um, on the inn, cleansing the water, cleansing the egg, and... Uh, Sacrificing the egg, all 50% faster. For the town, hey, uh, cleansing the books and burning the book, or pouring the gas can on the books, 50% faster. Same with the slaughterhouse. So with the uh, cranking of the, uh, of, of the crank <laughs> for the meat grinder, 50% faster. There is always a use for every, on every single map except for the asylum for fast worker. And that's why it's top of A instead of in the S tier. Because remember, S tier is useful on every single map. And it's a good use, not a conditional use. After Fast Worker, we have Repellent. Minion movement speed is de decreased by 50% when you are nearby. <sighs> I'm going to be putting this right here at the top of C. I guess I could put it in B. Actually, I, I, yeah, I could put it at the top of B tier. Stop it. There we go. <laughs> because it is slightly better than immune because this affects every minion on every map. They are slower so long as you're around. If you're not around, it doesn't matter. At least not to you. If you are around, good. You can kind of do different little plays. Like, you know, if somebody's running uh, a an item over to... You know, the, the, like one of the last little ritual areas, you can maybe play, you know, defense and run ahead of them to slow down the minions. And so long as you're around, generally around the person, those minions are slower, so they're not going to catch up to them. And then while they're burning the item, you can like stand in front of them and guard them so that the minions move a little bit slower. Or you can take the hit and uh, go down when the demon gets you, but you've already slowed down the minions, so maybe the guy can get through. This can be made to use... This can be used to make some plays, but it's not super useful in itself. If you're playing alone, you're not going to be using this perk. If you're playing as a team, you're the only one that really benefits from this perk unless you kind of helicopter around the other players. And usually what you're doing is uh, either everybody's running around gathering items or everybody's running back and forth to get your... Um, to, to, get, to get the uh, ritual items over to the ritual area. And in that case, there's only like one point where it's useful because you're passing each other. Or everybody's making a final stand and the only minions that are going to be moving slower are the ones that are around you. So like say you're in the inn, you're making the final stand, burning those last few books. There are basically two points to really stand at. Technically three because you want somebody always like one person at the front door, one person over here at the side door. And then like this person over here uh, kind of watches like the little bit of wall and the back of the uh, back of the church. So if you're this person over here, only these minions are really slowed. 
All of these are not. So it's conditional, but you can do some stuff with it. It's a little bit better than immune because it doesn't really teach you bad habits like running through minions. It teaches you to still avoid the minions and you get the benefit of slowing them down. In fact, I might put them, put it right here, top of B so far because of that, because it teaches you good habits. These can help you learn where things are and don't teach bad habits in general. So, okay, so after immune, we have, or I'm sorry, after repellent, we have regeneration. UV regenerates 50% faster, not usable in nightmare mode. This was top of A. I'm going to put it just slightly below fast worker. This is useful on every single map, but it's not useful in every single game mode. Can You can use it in normal, you can use it in hard, but you can't use it in nightmare. Nightmare is kind of where things really escalate and you get your your uh, points and stuff like that, and that's where people kind of farm out sort of things. And if it's not useful there, but it's useful in everything else, but it's also useful on every map, probably, you know, close to top to eight, top of A tier. I would want to put it in an S tier, but because it's not useful in Nightmare, I don't put it, I'm not putting it into S tier. Extremely useful, extremely good perk. It's always good to be able to have your uh, UV regenerate faster. In fact, on hard modes and stuff like that, whenever I play public matches, you can watch me usually bring regeneration if, you know, looking at the group and I'm just like, uh, they're probably not used to running the demon. They're probably not used to the tactics. So I'm going to carry this so that I can, you know, I, I can, you know, toy with the demon, bring the demon over to me. And you can watch me like stun the demon within a few seconds just because of the fast regeneration. It's very useful, uh, very practical perk. You see somebody bring you uh, regeneration on anything other than Nightmare and you're just like, sure, okay, cool. That's perfectly fine with me. You know, go around killing all the minions, go around stunning the demon for me. That's fine because you're going to regenerate your uh, UV faster. It's never a bad perk to bring, except, of course, if you bring, if you're going on to Nightmare mode. After that, we have Field Medic. Revives are 50% faster. Now, I'm still putting this into C tier, and it'll probably say, stay top of C tier. The reason I'm doing this is because, is this a good perk? I mean, yeah, faster is always better. But you're not reviving somebody in a dangerous situation if you can help it. And if you can help it, this perk wouldn't have come in handy. You only bring this in the hopes that a niche situation is going to pop up where, you know, the demon's coming and there are minions swarming and you need to absolutely positively get this one other person up so they can help you get the other people up and this is the only situation that's ever going to be really that helpful in. 50% faster revive is, it, it sounds really awesome, especially for people who want to play a healing role. But 50% faster revive isn't that useful because you're nine times out of 10, I, I want to say 10 times out of 10, except for like, you know, the, the one time somebody real, like everything goes into chaos and there's like this one little microsecond where things matter. 10 times out of 10, basically, you have time to just take the full time to revive somebody because somebody's either playing defense or they've crawled to a safe area where you're waiting for them. So, unfortunately, Field Medic is still, still staying in C tier. Yes, it's an okay perk, but its use is kind of pointless when you think about when you would be reviving somebody to begin with. You're never going to be reviving them. I say never, but when I say things like that, understand that I'm trying to say uh, never is basically this like 9 million times out of 9 million and one times, you're not going to try and revive somebody in a situation that you know you can't revive them in. You're going to buckle, you know, you're going to buckle down, you're going to get to a safe spot, and they're going to crawl to you so that you can revive them. That's just how the game works. That's just how players players work. If you're hoping to use this perk and do it in a situation where it's all clutch, you're going to be waiting so many games for that situation that you could have been just doing better with other perks. After Field Medic, we have Fully Charged. Fully Charged says UV is not consumed uh, for, I think it's eight, 20 seconds after using a battery. Uh, fully Charged is an okay perk. Um... 
Uh, I'll probably put it right... There we go. Basically, UV charge not consumed after using a battery. Here's the, here's the biggest problem, and I still wish they would just kind of reword this. Because using a battery, people think, oh, I, I'm using my UV. Why isn't it working? You know, what they don't realize is it means after you put the battery in. So I wish it, you know, they would say something like after equipping the battery or something like that, but they don't. Uh, be very, it, it, it'd be a lot more useful. But it's still a very useful perk. It's ha It has its situations. It's not something you're going to see people run a lot. Uh, if they they do run it, uh, most of the time I've seen people run it, I, I I usually ask them, you know that's only after you equip a battery, right? And they'll say, no, it says after you use the battery. <laughs> and you're just like, here's what it means. So useful perk has, you know, plenty of ways that you can use it. Uh, you can use it in the inn a lot. You know, you hit that battery and you go to, like, get rid of the webs or get rid of a bunch of spiders, or you need to stun uh, the demon, and then you got still maybe like 10 more seconds worth of uh, supercharged, and by the time the demon's red eye runs out, you can stun them again. You know, sometimes that, you know, works out. Um, it is useful, but it's not a perk that you're going to see people run because of how you have to run around with a battery, and that means your hands are full. You're run running around with a battery to equip it so that you can get this perk's use. So you can't pick up ritual items, you can't burn ritual items, you can't do anything other than hold that battery. Except, of course, in like the slaughterhouse where you can turn the cranks along and, and hold an item at the same time. Slaughterhouse is the one place where this perk says, okay, so you can kind of occasionally ignore my requirement, but every other map says you can't. So that's why it stays in B tier. Very useful, very powerful effect, but it has the condition that you have to be kind of useless while you're holding that battery. Not the most optimal situation that you want to be in. After fully charged, we have Team Leader. Long interacts are 100% faster when around any alive player. Now this is your interacts. I wish it was everybody else's interacts. But, because it's useful on every single map except for the Asylum, goes into A tier. Now, you'll notice that this does not have the condition that uh, revives are not faster, but when you are reviving somebody on the Asylum, you're usually doing it alone. Because when revives are needed, if you're doing it with somebody, Sure, it's faster, but unfortunately, um, in the Asylum, usually somebody will go for the revive, and, you know, you kind of split up. You go for the revive, I'll go for the ritual item. And once that happens, you have a... you've, you've lost team leader. Uh, if you say, wait, come with me, I have team leader, I can pick him up faster... Now you're both in the same spot, which means all the all the de all the minions are going for you, and the demon's only heading in one direction, and that's where the two of you and the person that's getting revived are. That's why you would split up. So most maps, yes, absolutely fantastic perk to use. You can't really complain about somebody bringing team leader until the end when it stops being useful because there isn't any other uh, alive person. You know, if you if you guys are dying, team leader loses its power. And it also has the condition that you do have to be around somebody to use. That's why it's not up somewhere like Fast Worker or any of these others. They don't have the condition that somebody else has to be a, a, alive around you. So, um, it's it's kind of a it's it's a good teamwork perk, but it's a teamwork perk that stops being useful on one map most of the time. Because there's no revive, there's no long interactions except for revives, and on the one inter the one interaction, the revive, uh, on the asylum, you usually don't want to be around anybody anyway. Um, at least, in, at least not in the end game. In the mid game, sure, it can be useful. End game, no, it's not really useful at all.
That's why it's in A tier and it's not in S tier. Uh, next up after Team Leader, we have the other new perk brought in by the Slaughterhouse is Conservationist. Conservationist says UV charge regenerates 80% faster when flashlight is off and it's not usable in nightmare mode. <sighs> so I'm going to be putting this... I, I want to put it ahead of uh, recharge. I also want to put it below recharge. So what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make them kind of even. Because if you're good enough at the game and you've kind of memorized the maps, you don't need your flashlight on. If you're not good enough at the maps, you do need your flashlights on. Certain maps have tight quarters and you won't always hear or see the minions coming with the flashlight off. Other maps, you can kind of get away with like looking kind of up at the sky to see the contrast between the silhouette of the minions and stuff like that, or the wall or anything like that against the, you know, the sky or the uh, background lighting of the map. So if you're good enough, this come, you know, th this would be second and A tier. If you're not good enough, it's maybe third and A tier. It's a weird dichotomy. Uh, and it's for an extra 30% uh, uh, UV regeneration over the 50% where you can keep your flashlight on. It's kind of a risk reward thing. If with a big enough risk, I would probably buff it just a little bit, maybe 90%. Even if you said 100%, it's only double the rejuvenation speed. And while 50% rejuvenation speed is awesome, 100% with the lights off, it's kind of that's kind of fair. But as it stands, it, it these two could flip, and you could be justified saying that. The reason I don't put it into S tier is because in nightmare mode, you really don't want to turn your flashlight off except for on certain maps like the uh, the town. If you go back and watch uh, my nightmare attempts. Uh, my solo nightmare attempts, I run around with my flashlight off because I can kind of see where I'm going and I've memorized the map for the most part so that I know where the turns are and everything. So I turn my flashlight off so I don't attract the spirits. But other people haven't gone that deep into the game to memorize stuff like that. So that's why these two can flip. That one thing is the only condition why they're around the same level. Oh. After Conservationist, we have Under Pressure. Long interacts are 150% faster when you are the last person alive. <sighs> so, Under Pressure is probably going to be right there. You are bringing a perk for the absolute worst case scenario, and usually when it comes to the last case scenario, it's going to happen before you have one ritual item left it's probably going to happen before you're even in a situation where you can revive somebody in 150 percent speed it's probably it's going to happen at the worst possible time and that's what this perk is for it's to make you think that you have a chance in the worst possible scenario when you usually don't and if you bring a perk for the worst possible scenario you're basically telling people uh, I, I don't want to bring perks. <laughs> We're working towards the most optimal scenario. I'm hoping for the worst scenario so that I can use my perk. You see how that works? That's It's not really the most optimal thing to do. It's not the best thing to really tell people. They don't want to hear something like that. They really don't. <laughs> so don't bring this perk. <laughs> it's, it's one of the worst perks in the game. <laughs> Just because it's 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 literally sitting there telling everybody that you don't want to plan for the beginning of the beginning of the game, the middle of the game, or the end of the game. You want to be prepared if everything screws up and you are the last person alive. You have a twenty five percent chance in the worst case scenario to use this perk. You are betting on horrible odds that this perk comes in handy. You have to be the person that's alive 
the last person that's alive to use this perk. If this perk activated a little bit at a time as people went down and then turned off once people, like, you know, once people were uh, picked back up, that'd be one thing. But this perk says, no, 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 no. You have to be the last person in the worst case scenario live to get this bonus. And you probably won't get to use this bonus. That's why this perk is just, it, it's D tier. And unless they do something to it, it'll just stay D tier. Finally, we have supercharge plus 20% movement speed for 20 seconds after using a battery. So this was in D tier last time. <sighs> And it's probably, it's probably going to stay in D tier this time. But I'm going to put it at the top of D tier instead of the bottom of D tier. Because there are uses for it. Where, you know, oh no, the demon's coming for me. Equip my battery, which is what you actually have to do to get it to be used. Not use your flashlight. Equip, not, not uh, use the battery, equip the battery. But, um... The, you have to do that to get away from the demon or something like that. Sure, it's useful. But it still encourages you to be kind of useless for the remainder of the game. For, so long as you hold on to that battery, you are not helping out the team. You're not carrying ritual items. You're not gathering medkits. You're not gathering batteries. And you're not gathering... Um, you, you're not helping to... Uh, move virtual items from the prep station to the sacrifice station. All you're doing is holding onto a battery so that you can hopefully get a 20% speed, so you can get a 20% speed boost. Here's one thing. I have actually seen this happen. I've seen somebody use this perk. They've run around with a battery and I've told them how bad this perk is. And they said, no, 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 no. Because if I get in trouble, all I have to do is equip this and I get a 20% speed boost. Guess what happened not seconds after they said that? They got grabbed by a minion. They got grabbed by a minion. Where's your 20 speed 20% 20 speed boost? Doesn't matter now, does it? No, probably been more useful to use that UV that the battery gave you to kill that minion. So, are there niche scenarios that you can use this in? Sure. Are you going to be a useless teammate until that point? Also, sure. So you really don't want to use a perk that requires you to hold an item when you can't hold more than one item. Especially if that item is can just be equipped and you don't and your hands are free again. So that's why Supercharged still, in my opinion, is a D tier perk. Next up we have Trapper. Last ritual item becomes highlighted. This is a C tier perk. It's always been a C tier perk, even the last one. In fact, these two are the only two that have stayed in C tier and kept their positions in the tier that they were in. Uh, the reason this is a C tier perk is you are hoping that everybody hasn't already gathered all the items for when it comes to like the farmhouse, the asylum, the uh, inn, any any map really. When you, maps where you can take all the stuff and put them in an area, you're hoping people haven't done that. Or you're planning on, okay, maybe something is screwed up, and, like, we had one last egg, but the person who was running the egg to the next, to the uh, final area got down by the demon, a spider picked it up, and I, I can see it, though. I can see it. I can see it. So it has its uses. It's not a useless perk. But, you're again, you're kind of, like, betting on the worst-case scenario. One of the worst case scenarios, I should say. Not the worst case scenario, because then it'd be, it'd be like down here again. Does it have its uses? Yes. Are you going to bring it as a regular team, like, assistance perk? No. Because it's not a team perk. It's a personal perk. Are you going to bring it in lieu of any of these other perks that say, this is awesome. I'm awesome. Absolutely not. Is it absolutely kind of useless? Because if you use it, there are better uses of it. uses for it. No, that's like these. So it gets into C, but it never goes beyond it, because 
it only lets you see the last ritual item. If it always lets you see where one ritual item is, fantastic. Or the, like the furthest one away, fantastic. But since it's only the last ritual item of on the map, not that useful. And also, remember that you have when it says the last ritual item, it means you have gotten rid of nine out of the ten ritual items. So even if there's one other ritual item on the map and somebody's holding it, you don't get to see you, your perk doesn't activate. They had to get rid of that ritual item. They had to burn that ritual item first. That's why this perk will never bounce up unless they buff it. And last but not least, we have Evader. Plus 25% movement speed when chased by Azazel. Now, this was in S tier, and it's going to stay in S tier. Um, I don't know if it belongs at the top of S tier or if it belongs at the bottom of S tier. And even saying that, there's only two S tiers. I'm going to put it right here, because here's what I'm going to say. Um, Evader is a experienced player's perk. If you're used, I've gotten used to using it. I don't like using it because I just don't like putting myself in that situation. But I know that even with my limited ability to run the demon on maps, I can at least give my team a minute's worth of time with Evader. And I'm not that good using Evader because that's not the role that I like to put myself in. But I have a fundamental use of it, so I can buy my team a full minute worth of time in the worst case scenario. So that tells you how strong Evader is. I've seen uh, people like Zap use Evader the entire match. They used Evader to evade the demon the entire match. Flawlessly. So that everybody else could just do what they needed to do to get the win. Evader is that strong. But it doesn't get to the top of S tier because it requires that much game knowledge. It requires, you know, your knowledge of the map. It requires knowledge of the demon's preferential um, pathing and how to take advantage of it. Um, it also sometimes requires that you know little tip like little tips and tricks on how to like hop over things or how to you know get over the map in different ways so is evader powerful it absolutely is and it's good on every single map because the demon chases you on every single map is it good for new players no if a player has some experience and they've decided they want to try and start running the demon Put on Evader now and start using your map knowledge and stuff like that to try and run the demon. You're going to fail a good number of times. I failed a good number of times. I fail 50% of the time that I try it, uh, because mostly because I don't like doing it. <laughs> so, But Evader is so strong that it can make a mediocre player, a mediocre runner, and I, that's my term for people who run the demon and get their attention, like me, into a valuable resource because now like usually when i'm playing with teams somebody else will go and run the demon but sometimes i'll always bring this perk when everybody else is bringing this perk but sometimes the demon catches on to me first and i run the demon and i at least run the demon long enough that my team can get most of the uh ritual items burned before somebody else takes over somebody better then me takes over. But me being able to use this perk to buy enough time for most of the uh, for, for most of the ritual items to get finished is absolutely amazing. That tells you how strong the perk is. And it's useful on every single map. And that's why it's S tier. Evader is easily top tier. You can't argue this fact. So again, S tier, this is for perks that are useful on every single map. There's no bad reason. There's no good reason to not take them. There's no uh, there's no downside to taking them. A tier is for perks that are useful on almost almost every single map for almost every single player. There's just one or two little nitpicky things or one little map 
that stops them from being able to be useful on every single map, so it stops them from being able to be used in S tier. B is for the perks that you can bring to supplement uh, better perks and to kind of round out your team play if you really want to, if you're not wanting to bring the best perks. B tier perks would be like A tier perks if A tier perks didn't exist. You know, these are always useful in a team setting, but not in an optimal setting. C tier perks have very niche uses. Um, can, are they useful idea perks? Absolutely. But they're kind of niche situation perks. D tier perks are, you should never want to be in this situation. And if you are in this, this situation, there are better perks than... <laughs> Uh, than the perks in D tier. These are perks you really just don't want to use, period. Because they don't really bring that much to the table, they restrict you too much, or they're relying on too many conditions to be useful in 99 out of 100 games. But that is the Slaughterhouse update perk tier list, general tier list for like all the maps, stuff like that. I'll eventually start doing, you know, redoing the tier list for the farmhouse, the inn, the uh, asylum, town, and the slaughterhouse to give you guys an idea of which perks you probably want to, you know, bring in for these uh, for these maps. And it'll kind of look similar. I almost don't even feel like doing it, but I probably will anyway. But this is the general tier list for the slaughterhouse update 4.1. We're going to see uh, what the devs do coming forward we know there's always already a new map coming forward so that means there's going to be new perks new characters and stuff like that hope you all enjoyed the video if you have a differing opinion on certain perks let me know down in the comments i always like conversing with people about you know what they think about uh where i place my different perks and stuff like that but you all have a great day and as always stay positive